Today is Eureka, Grade 2, Module 1, Lesson 8. Take from 10 within 100. Let's look at a story problem today. It says, Jacob has 12 bouncy balls. He gives 8 of them to his friend Pete. How many bouncy balls does Jacob have left? Here's a picture of Jacob's 12 bouncy balls. Now remember, he gives eight of these to his friend Pete. I want you to think of what number sentence or strategy you could use to solve this problem. Think, maybe if you would like, you can stop the math video by pausing it and you could work this out on your whiteboard and see if you used one of the strategies I used. Here are some of the strategies you could have used. The first one is, I counted on from eight. Now, when we count on from eight, we need to start at the number eight, and we need to know where we're counting to. In this case, it was 12, because 12 was the total number of bouncy balls that Jacob had. And remember, he gave away eight of them to his friend Pete. We're going to count on from eight to 12. Here we go. Nine, 10, 11, 12. How many times did I have to count on to get from 8 to 12? 1, 2, 3, 4. I had to count on 4 times, so 8 plus 4 equals 12. Well, I know 12 was how many bouncy balls Jacob had, and 8 is how many he gave away, so 4 must be the total number of bouncy balls that Jacob has left. I counted on from 8 to 12. This is a strategy you may have used. If you did, check. That's a great strategy. Let's look at another one. I used pretend fingers. Here are our pretend fingers to 12. Now we have two hands because two hands together make 10, and then we've added two more, 11, 12. Now remember, the reason we're using 12 is because Jacob had, that's right, 12 bouncy balls. So. I know that he had 12, and do you remember how many he gave to his friend Pete? Did you say eight? If you did, you're correct. So we need to put down eight fingers. In this case, I'm going to cross them out. Here I've crossed out eight fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we can look at how many fingers are remaining to find out how many bouncy balls Jacob has left. And if you can count with me, we will find out. One, two, three, four. So he had 12 bouncy balls. He took eight of them away and gave them to Pete. And now he has four left for himself. If you use the strategy of using pretend fingers, check. That's a great strategy. Let's look at another one. I used a number bond and take from 10. Let's look at this one. We know that Jacob had 12 bouncy balls. That's how many he had total. Well, we know we can split 12 into its place value parts, which would be 10, this one representing 110, and two, this two representing two ones. Together, 10 and two are the parts that can make 12. Now, we can start with a subtraction sentence that will help us figure out how many he has left by taking from 10. So 10, subtract, remember, how many did he give to Pete? You got it, it was eight. So 10 subtract eight equals two. But we can't stop there because remember, we still have this other part of 12. So now we have to say, well, he had two, was the difference of 10 subtract eight, and two more over here is the other part, together equals four. So, 12 subtract 8 equals 4. That means that Jacob has 4 bouncy balls left after he gave 8 to Pete. If you use this strategy, check. This was a great strategy. This is also the strategy we're going to continue to look at. Let's go to the next slide. If we know that 12 subtract 8 equals 4 by using a number bond to break apart 12 into its two place value parts, 10 and two. Then we take from 10, add the two remaining parts to get our total of how many bouncy balls Jacob had left. 
Well, if we can do it with 12, could we do it with 22? Here we have 12 subtract 8 equals 4. What about 22 subtract 8? Or 42 subtract 8? Let's take a look at these other two equations. Let's start with 22 subtract 8. We need to break 22 into two parts that will make it easier to solve this equation. Now, we're practicing the take from 10 strategy, so one of our parts needs to be, that's right, 10. When I take 10 out of 22, that leaves me with 12, because this two represents two tens. If I take one 10 away, that means there's still one 10 and two ones left over. That's 12 right here. So now the two parts for 22 that I have are 10 and 12. Let's go ahead and subtract from 10 first. 10 subtract 8 equals 2. Well, that looks familiar. We knew that. That was over here as well. But we can't stop there. We have to take this 2 and add it to the other part that is still remaining. That was 12. 2 plus 12 equals 14. So the total would be 14. 22 subtract 8 equals 14. Now, you may start to notice a pattern here. I see four ones, and over here I see one ten four ones. Let's keep going. Let's explore 42 subtract 8. Remember, we're going to break this into two parts. One part has to be 10 because we're using the take from 10 strategy. When I take 10 out of 42, that leaves me with 32 remaining. Remember, 4 and 42 represents 4 tens. So when I take away 1 10, I have 3 tens left and 2 ones. So 10 and 32 are the two parts for 42. Now, we're going to start by taking from 10. 10 subtract 8 equals 2. Wow! That was definitely the same each time. But we can't stop there because this 2 has to be added to the other remaining part, which was 32. So 2 plus 32 equals 34. Our answer was 34. Now, this is really interesting. Each of these have some similarities. Remember, we were doing the take from 